We want to look at why in the world credit scores are going up during this pandemic. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by TD Ameritrade. For a trading platform that fits you, Thinkorswim offers customizable screeners, charting, and forecasts. Learn more at tdameritrade.com slash thinkorswim. I'm David Brancaccio. After the shock of recession with only about half the 22 million jobs lost due to pandemic having returned, why then is FICO, one of the leading credit score companies, reporting that on paper more of us are looking like better risks for borrowing? The average FICO score topped 700 this summer, reaching its highest on record. Here's Marketplace's Samantha Fields. Two of the main things you need to do if you want to get your credit score up, pay your bills on time and pay down debt. And more people have actually been able to do that during the pandemic, says Ted Rossman of CreditCards.com. We've seen all this government stimulus. We've seen all these hardship programs. Lots of people have mortgages and student loans in deferral or forbearance. But those stimulus checks and federal unemployment benefits are long gone, and Congress is at an impasse. And that worries Chi Chi Wu, a staff attorney with the National Consumer Law Center. If we don't get additional assistance. I am concerned that we're going to see a lot of consumers unable to pay bills, unable to pay rent. And that will eventually have a negative effect on people's credit scores. Many lenders are already factoring that in, Rossman says. So even though the average FICO score is going up, it's gotten a lot harder to access many types of credit. So that higher score might actually be worth less. I'm Samantha Fields for Marketplace. Today's the deadline set by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to get a broad pandemic relief package worked out before the election, which is two weeks from today. If there is something, it might cost something like $2 trillion. Marketplace's Nova Safo is watching this. Any progress? Well, appears to be, if you look at where we started out, David, which was, as you know, very far apart, just on the amount both sides wanted to spend, we had a $3.5 trillion proposal from House Democrats back in May. The White House initially signaled it wanted to spend far less than that. So did Republicans in the Senate. But the White House and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi have narrowed the spending gap. They are hovering just around that two trillion dollar mark, give or take a few hundred billion dollars. And Pelosi's office says she spoke for an hour with Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin last night, and they did make more progress. So is this happening today? He said, asking an unfair question. Uh, yeah, right. There appeared to be some nagging policy differences still on how money would be spent on things like coronavirus testing, aid to state and local governments. Also, there's the liability protections issue for businesses that Republicans are seeking. Pelosi has accused the White House of wanting vague spending language on some of this so that they can have more leeway on how to allocate funds. Well, can they bridge the remaining differences? That that was there's some cautious optimism yesterday, at least on that. But White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows did say that there may not be enough Republican votes in the Senate for something like $2 trillion in spending. Meanwhile, the Senate today is expected to vote on a much smaller pandemic relief bill today and also another one tomorrow. Nova, thank you. Market participants suggest this is all one reason stock index futures are higher this morning. S&P and NASDAQ futures are reach up eight tenths of a percent. Oh, and here's how it works. Let's test it out. I'm talking along, interrupting, not letting the other guy finish. To be used in Thursday night's final Trump-Biden debate. The new mute button, according to the Commission on Presidential Debates, can be used only during each candidate's two-minute statement at the start of each of the debate's subject areas. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Mindcast. Offering cloud email security, Mindcast is dedicated to protecting companies from spam, phishing, and other email-based cyber threats. Serving more than 20,000 Microsoft 365 customers, Mindcast.com, relentless protection, resilient world. And by the Wall Street Journal. The stories behind today's headlines have never been more important. The Journal podcast provides the facts. You can listen wherever podcasts are offered. And by Avalara, simplifying sales tax compliance with cloud-based solutions. Avalara automatically integrates with more than 700 of the most widely used ERP and e-commerce solutions. Avalara, tax compliance done right. WNYC is supported by Columbia Law School with the new podcast, Beyond Unprecedented, featuring leading experts as they chart a course for economic recovery in the wake of the pandemic. More at law.columbia.edu and wherever podcasts are available. 
Join New York Public Radio's Community Advisory Board in conversation with WNYC's Editor-in-Chief, Audrey Cooper, on Wednesday, October 28th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Details at wnyc.org slash CAB. Hi, I'm Allison Stewart. This year, life in New York changed for a lot of us. No more nights out with friends, no meetups at restaurants or bars, more time inside, more sweatpants, and more screens. And for many of us, more WNYC. If WNYC has been playing a larger role in your life lately, we are honored. We're here when you need us, even if you need us a lot more. But to be there for you, we need you to be there for us. Listener contributions, no matter the amount, get pooled together to bring you everything you hear. So if you feel like sometimes you wouldn't make it without WNYC, you should know the reverse is even more true. Without your help, there is no WNYC. Thank you for listening. If you can, please become a sustaining member right now. Here's how. Call us, 888-376-9692, or give at WNYC.org. This is day number two of our fall pledge drive. Thank you for joining us today. And today we have a special going on. If you make a donation of $10 per month today, we will thank you with two WNYC face masks and a Gothamist face mask. The WNYC mask is red. It has the uh, WNYC logo. The Gothamist mask has the Gothamist logo on gray. And today is the last day to get three face masks for $10 per month. After today, they will be available for uh, $15 per month. So a little added incentive today to get a very nice thank you gift. And of course, the main reason to call is to support WNYC and all of the news and information that you rely on here. You can give at WNYC.org or call us 888-376-9692.